Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the next game for yourselves today, which is going to be Late Bloomers versus Torch. DM, this one should be interesting. I know neither of these teams can now get to the Pro League DM, but last time they faced each other, it was really close. That's true. I mean, um, this is kind of a highlight or maybe a preview to what we're going to see at the Challenger Cup. Now, Bloom just put up a pretty decent fight against the Fat Junks. They were behind a huge amount of gold early, still kept themselves afloat for a little while, but was unable to really turn the tides. They kept themselves on the defensive for a while, and while they won some of their defensive measures, they were unable to actually transition to offense and turn it back into their favor. So now, uh, going fresh in against Torch, they're just going to try to keep their record against them strong and maybe send Torch... Uh, with their tail between their legs. So the same point, Torch wants to have at least one point on the board in these plans. Yeah, they want revenge as well, because last time these two faced, Torch did win the game. They were very strong throughout, and late bloomers did a couple of nice steals and turned it around and held on to come back and actually take that game away from Torch, which was technically in the bag. So, band-wise, nothing too unusual. Geb, Aphrodite, Athena, and Osiris band away, which means Guardian role is going to be an interesting one this time around. Loki gets first picked, which is a great pickup considering the fact that they had a, a pretty big swing here in terms of tankiness. I mean, Loki now has the opportunity to burst someone down, especially with that Geb Shield being gone. But it looks like we have a sub coming in. Uh, Defoe was not in the previous game, so he's going to be jumping in for this one. Uh, a player that we saw a lot in the early stages of the qualifiers uh, and in the previous qualifiers for the launch tournament as well, but not as much uh, recently. Oh, back on the roster for this, and he's going to be locking in Mercury right now, along with Jean Cui, which was left up after the banning phase as well. Now, will late bloomers go for Nemesis here? We've been discussing how good Nemesis is against Jean Cui. Will they go for it? Well, did he play it last Loki. time? I mean, Loki was for solo lane, uh, or can be for solo lane, so having Nemesis would be a really big pick. And it looks like Bacchus is going to be hovered on by Fabi, which is precarious to me because Fabi has had two rather weak showings in the past uh, two games that we've seen him in today and those were with two Guardians that have a very easy time in the early game whereas Bacchus has an incredibly difficult time in the early game uh, so I don't know I mean Fabi's going to have to be very very careful I mean when you look at what Guardians are left on the table as well it's only Kumbakana, Bacchus Sobek Ymir has been rising back as well but he's chosen Bacchus at the moment and Bacchus you know Always seems to just hang around weirdly in a weird spot away from every other Guardian, but still get picked up quite, you know, regularly to an extent. So we're going to go back into the ban phase here, and it's going to finish up with, it looks like, Artemis and Alquong. And I, I like the Alquong takeout. I mean, this character has been showing up a lot, but yep. Ra is still on the table, which is kind of confusing. And where is, where is the Janus? Where is Giannis? I've not seen it. Have we seen you one Giannis today overall? And that was Cyclone Spin in the solo yeah. lane, which I'm not a big fan, I'll be honest, of Giannis in the solo lane. I know Devios made it work during the tournament, but I think he just get, has better utility from the mid lane overall, let's be honest. However, Giannis is not being picked up again. It's back to late bloomers, though, after they're locking Apollo as their hunter. And maybe we will see a Giannis pick because they're still looking for a mid laner here. I like that Apollo was picked. He's been kind of overlooked in the past couple games, so to see him picked up is very strong. He is still definitely the best hunter. I mean, huge amount of control, uh, great rotations, of course, with Across the Sky. And, hey, Scylla finally shows back up, which is a great hey. pick because, I mean, I don't understand why she's not being focused. She basically kept Dignitas in the land against Snipe, single-handedly. Yeah, I mean, Scylla is a great pick overall. Scylla just, she disappeared because of the Polynomicon nerf DM. Everyone thought she was too weak because of that, and her early game was very, very weak overall in terms of wave clear. However, people have started to realize now, hang on a second, the changes that happened to Scylla did not nerf her damage in any way. It just nerfed how quickly she could spam out her crush overall. And now that people have realized that, that she's still the same god she was, she's got ridiculous late game potential. And hopefully, you know, late bloomers can try and make that one pay off for themselves. Well, that's going to be the lineups here. As we see, it looks like Kumba Karna has been picked up for Polium. That solo lane, or rather dual lane, is going to have a lot of damage potential with Apollo. So to pick up someone so tanky and so controlling is smart. But it's uh, curious to me to see the Warriors not coming out once again. Some Wukong uh, yep. not picked up. Chalk not picked up. 
I don't think some people have realized the Sun Wukong ability just yet. That's the big issue with Sun Wukong. The Kumba Corner pick overall is a great matchup against Bacchus. Groggy Strike prevents you from being knocked up while you're using it, so the belly flop does not work from Bacchus. On top of that, when Bacchus belches, you just yawn and stop the damage that he can put out. So Kumba Corner has a very, very good matchup overall against the likes of Bacchus in this engagement between the two and a much more effective wave clear. So on paper right now, I'm quite comfortable with Torch's lineup here. So just about two minutes, guys, until we get into this game. Uh, Bloom and Torch, neither team has an opportunity to make it to the SPL, but they're fighting for bragging rights. So make sure to stick around. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the North American Play-Ins. Week three, late bloomers versus torches on your screens right now. And the Toga boy, once again, is back online in Fabi playing Bacchus. Yeah, you know, again, I'm going to go into the fact that Fabi has had a very weak day. And he's picked himself a character that is uh, generally seen as very, very difficult. But we'll see how they choose to go about this one overall in this game. We're going to see Kumbakana and Apollo laying against Rama and Bacchus. And in that duo lane overall, I expect Torch to push pretty consistently better than late bloomers do overall in that one. Rom still is a fantastic god if you can land the auto attacks. And King Taco did show you know signs of life with his Freya play earlier on, DM. Hindu, going into this, you mean you look at the draft. Who do you think has the stronger team right now? Touch. Like, Young no, Mercury, Apollo. I'm really happy with Touch's team composition here. They've got Agony in middle lane. They've got Jean Cui be able to go for the Warlock Sash. You know, Apollo combo lane's fantastic. And to top it all off, you've got that hyper carry Mercury in the jungle. Please, that's amazing. Especially I feel if they get into the. Wait, did Mercury? Um, do I have a glitch? What happened? Did nobody pick up abilities? Oh, there's Polium's hand. Okay. Uh, right side, Mercury, it looks like, still has... Actually, he spent 250 gold on pots. On pots at the start. Not going to go for a hog. So no, he's it just looks come... like he's going to be doing the, uh, the, bins, uh, the beads sprint rush, uh, meaning he's going to have a great amount of late game team potential. At the same time, he's not going to have that early game advantage. I Mercury is not a character who has great clear in the in the start. No, he doesn't have great clear in the start, and that's going to be, could cost him a detriment. But we'll see overall. In terms of what you say, though, having that extra active slot available, DM could actually benefit him being able to get the speed, sorry, get the sprint and beads as well for himself. But we'll see how much it hurts him during the early stages. And if it doesn't, then it will pay off for him going to the late stage. But late bloomers looking to try and go aggressive. Fiddy's kind of roaming around in a weird place. They're going to try and collapse on left-hand side and steal I, away this left-hand camp. I really love what they're doing here. Oh, but right there might have been a drop. They're spending too much time on this mid-camp that they're not even going to uh, get immediately. This is going to be a major detriment to them. They have Got call from super touch. hard... Yeah, it was a super hard rotation there from late bloomers and a rotation that did not pay off. They reset the buff two times on top of the fact that they didn't even grab the kill that they pretty much had guaranteed. That was a big drop. And Torch also immediately went to that blue camp and shared the experience, so Agni's not that too far behind of hitting level 2 in middle lane. Once he gets a couple of creeps off this DM, he's still going to be level 2 and he's not going to lose that much overall. Meanwhile, the right-hand side, you're going to see the solo lane is going to be able to push this one up and deny a full wave of experience to the tower if they're lucky and even invade the blue. You know, really, Defoe is not going to feel the lack of experience here, probably until the level 4 and level 5 push. Early on, he will keep level with CV almost hand in hand. He just needs to be aggressive. The whole point of Agni is that he has amazing clear and amazing poke, whereas Scylla has amazing team fight potential, but early game, her clear is just absolutely abysmal, and it doesn't look like Defoe is really taking that advantage. Well, he got to lane a little bit late overall. He wasn't level 2 until quick enough for himself, so he, I don't think he's going to be able to put the advantage on that he's got in that lane. Maybe he can miss outplay it, though, overall. Maybe that's what he needs to do, as Defoe does this time around, and he's actually pushed this lane in now, and now maybe he can start doing the comeback onto CV and punish him for being silly in the early game. Apollo and Kumba Karna are actually out pushing Rama they will. and Bacchus. They will. Time and time again. The throwback is such a great ability coming out from Kumba Karna with the wave right. clear, and Apollo with the so beautiful. It's fantastic. It's really, really helpful for them to be able to do that over and over again. Fabi has to use the belch, and it's not that great of wave clear in the early stages. You've got to position yourself well. And on top of that, you know, Taco has to use a lot of abilities. Belly flop comes out onto the left-hand side on me club. Better damage from the belch coming out, but Fabi eats a lot of poke for that overall. 
you know, left side, or rather right side, Osmos has taken a lot of damage himself. If he gets too aggressive here and gets carded, he can be tracked very easily through still. Uh oh, is that going to be it? No, he's not going to go far. I thought for a second the special delivery was going to come out there in an attempt to try to push him down, but he's actually just going towards speed camp. So for the time being, it's still 0 0 on the map. A small lead for late bloomers to get both mid camps, however. With the laning phases that are coming out from Torch, I feel the laning phases should put them back into the lead again, sooner rather than later. Agony's going to be able to continue pushing out the middle lane. Left hand side is going to continue to get pushed in by Apollo and Kumbakana. We're into a quick pause, guys. We'll be right back once we get through the pause, so it won't be too long. So at the moment, we're currently in a poor situation, guys. But one thing to note as well, just so you know, if you just tuned in, NA planes right now, Fat Chunks Assemble and Five Angry Men have advanced to the Pro League overall DM. And are you surprised by that? No, not at all. I mean, anyone who is doing a fantasy bracket generally is going to have 5AM and Fat Chunks on top. I mean, they were just the clear favorites. Yeah, I mean, they really were coming into this. Late Bloomers came in 1-2 this week, and they've not had the greatest run so far. We see them in this game. Torch, though, started at 0-3 and lost their first game, so they were taken out of contention immediately. And so Fat Chunks and Five Angry Men have both advanced into the Pro League right now. So they're, they're going to be going up against the likes of Dignitas, Cog, and Cog Red. And on top of that, Snipe as well. Do you actually see Five, five, five Angry Men and Fat Chunks, you know, doing well in the Pro League? They could, uh, honestly. They definitely could. It, it's all going to come down to... Do they have the team chemistry and the patience? And that, to me, is the big deal. Do they have the patience? Because that's one thing that Dignitas and Cog and Kagra do so well, is that even if they're behind, they stay so smart and so patient in what they can go for, and they don't put themselves in greedy situations. Yeah, and one thing to note, I mean, with the, with the LAN event just came ahead from the North America as well, we saw how close the teams all were, you know, every single one went to a best of three scenario, went to the last game scenario realistically, which is fantastic for the North American team in general, just to show the sort of depth of ability in the players, and it's not just like one team's dominating anymore like it used to be just a few months ago. So we should be getting back into the game in just a minute here, guys, we do have a quick pause. Um... We're going to jump to a quick commercial, and we'll be right back with the uh, continuation of this game. Stick around. Welcome back once again. The pause is now uninitiated, and we're back in the game. Late Bloomers versus Torch, left-hand side. Still continuing to see the duo lane of Torch pushing into tower over and over again. Cosmos actually heading back to the base super early to finish up that heart seeker. Uh, he's going to gain some movement speed, of course, the ability to start stacking up. Engagement left on side. Damage. Looks like Kumba overextended there. Going to eat a belly flop and eat a belch as well, but get out for now. But look at the rotation from Fiddy here. The, um, can they actually punish Pulliam? He's not aware of this just yet. And you see the rolling from King Taco trying to apply the pressure, but he's taking a lot of damage from Archers. Oh, actually dashing through. Swift Edge is going to do some damage. Belly flop is going to hit for a lot of... Ooh. Great stop there coming out from Pulliam. Mercury. He'll be able to escape. Yeah, Merc's in there. Not level 5 just yet. I don't know if he has the line of sight for this one. But he oh, can go but for he Fabby. backs up. Why did he back up? He put himself in a very bad spot. Biddy actually getting into level 5 there. Doesn't really have what he needs to try to go in. But he does have his ultimate available to him if he decides to go back. Yeah, if he does decide to go back. One thing to note there, I like the disengage from Torch. They could have gone aggressive on Fabi, but with Fiddy just hitting level 5 there, that would have been a bad call for them overall to try and do that. Left hand camps go to Torch. Right hand one's still available. Fabi's a little bit late to them right now. Fiddy going to be able to pick the speed buff up for free. Again, not splitting the experience. I've seen this a lot coming out from him today. He's not using that Bumba's mask efficiently. Yeah, he's not trying to spend the experience as much as he would like to. Meanwhile, Osmos took a long time to bring down those mid camps on right, but he's not lost any farm out here. But Fiddy going aggressive against two members in lane and goes down to headshot over Raw, who was on that Mercury, still full HP. I think I think my man's on tilt. Like that was just completely ill conceived. He dashes in his only escape method against two people who were more than enough help to deal with him. He got blown up in a heartbeat, and Bloom takes in a very early lead off the back of a, a, a rather foolish play. Well, that's the first sort of lead we've seen develop in this game so far. First blood going over to Torch. Right hand side, have a quick check in. Jean Cui versus Loki DM. And all you're going to see there is farm, realistically. Headshot actually getting some extra farm on the top side is he's going to be able to pick up his speed buff. Now, remember, guys, Mercury's passive actually gives him extra damage based on his movement speed. But without Hand of the Gods, he took a ton of it, a damage overall and a very long time to be able to pick that up. But with John Quay here, he should be able to heal a lot of this back yeah. up using the Bumba's Mask passive. 
Yeah, using the bumper's bash passive on the blue buff, you'll see it just jump straight back up to almost full. He's going to base anyway right now. I'm guessing he's got enough money to finish off his yep. boots. Going to go back, finish those off. Got the Warrior Tabby online, and like you said, that's going to increase his passive. I would have liked to see a ward pick up. He's actually leaving the base without wards for what could be no reason, but he's charging up the Sonic Boom just in case Fiddy and CV uh, get a little player. bit aggressive. And I, I, I do. He's oh, going. He's actually going. CV in, in trouble. That. Oh my god, the timing of that. Look where they said it. No went from CV. Went aggressive. They were about to make a play at the same time, but Osmos comes in at the exact moment because that, that was so interesting, DM, because late bloomers had just called for a play. The Sentinel went out from CV for the aggression at the same time as the Sonic Boom came in, and that would have paid off a torch if it wasn't for the fact that Osmos was the rotating coming in with the assassination. That was a beautiful rotation. Super quick. I didn't even notice he was doing that, which is going to give them the answer they needed. The guys uh, on Bloom actually have now uh, shrunk the lead at least a little bit. They're only about 400 gold behind Torch at this point. Well, oh, Fiddy going to rotate over to the left-hand side, pick up a bit of experience while going back to base there as well. So he's going to pick up himself up a mana potion, going to try and continue working on his boots. Got a couple more wards in his inventory as well, so making sure he's working on vision for his team. Midcap's going to spawn in about another minute by the looks of it. They were a little bit delayed due to the engages. Actually, another 30 seconds, I'd say, overall. As mid lane once again, you're going to see Agony trying to push this one out over and over again. You know, left camp is about to spawn. What did Taco just do? He just rolled in against two members in the duel lane. That was aggression if I've ever seen it. Belly flapping Toxicate, forcing the arm out. Astro Barrage goes off and now Paul is in trouble. Throwback's going to buy him some time and that was very, very aggressive ult from King Taco. He panicked too much. He's got it's, six seconds up there, DM. It's just like Freya. You, you need to take your time. If you just spam everything out, it's not going to pay well. CV actually gets a huge amount Osmos. of damage off on <gasps> Oh! Misses the assassinate. He was looking for a big pick there overall. Didn't that find it. That would have been a kill. That would have been yeah, a great yeah. kill. Would have been a great kill as well. I mean, jean Kui, this time jean Kui did rotate over as well for Touch, which is good for late Bloomer's point of view. However, if he gets those mid camps, he's actually going to pay off well for Touch. But maybe he oh, dies. I don't think so, because I think he's about to get blown up. In comes Headshot once again. I'm a monster going to rain down. That doesn't get the kill. Actually, <laughs> Belly flop. see Fiddy get it in the back. Now, he's trying to find something. Fabi out of mana here. See, he finds a pretty good Sigum. Nice crush as well. Headshot will be forced out. And somehow, Bloom finds a pretty good rush in that concern. Left hand side, we've got a fight trading off between the two hunters right now. Minions are getting involved, but Taco has the advantage of being able to shoot through them. He's trying to body block his Apollo right now. Taco has just changed his mind, though. He's like, no, nah, I've had enough. I'm backing out. It well, was a close fight. versus two, I think I'd dip as well. Yeah, he dipped at the right time overall, and he knew Apollo didn't have his ultimate available. That's why he was looking for the aggression there. Didn't pay off him, but he's still two for two. So now... Eight minutes into the game, the teams are pretty even. Still about 400 gold, 800 experience, which, you know, it, it's it's not really notable at this point in the game. No, it's That's not. not something you could say, like, wow, we have a, a major advantage. At this point, it's, it's just a small amount that they need to take advantage of and be very smart about their farm, continue pushing, and just not fall behind. The funny thing about experience, these DM, is the fact that on paper, when you, you know, see the stats and you see that there's a 400 experience difference, you don't notice it until you actually look at the people who have all the experience. Defoe on Agni is level 11, Scylla is only level 9. That's a two level disparity. It's being made up elsewhere in the team because Loki's ahead by a level over jean Kui at the moment. But right now that, that disparity in mid could actually come to pay an effect for favour of Agni. So, it's hard to say what team has a major advantage here. I mean, you look at the, the builds across the board, and while Mercury's going to help in the end game with that build, I mean, right now, he's kind of a detriment. He doesn't have Hand of the Gods, which means he's just destined to fall behind here. As you can see, Fiddy has taken a small advantage. They just need to be faster about their rotations. Yeah, talking about rotations, everybody from Torch rotated left immediately. Bloom has responded, doing the same thing. Now they're looking for middle lane Agni. Right now, Sentinel comes out, just going to farm up the lane, and Fiddy just going to rotate round, decide not to go aggressive this time round as Mercury still has that ultimate available, looking for an opportunity, but left again. What we've seen out of King Taco, well, he's just gone to ward, actually. I thought he was going to try and rotate on the back. He's going to trade a little bit of damage back and forward. Ooh. I don't expect much more. Oh, he's losing the trade hard. He's me club right now. Actually, I was looking at Vulture on top, uh, who's maybe going to get pressured here. Now, they have the uh, the double push here. They're going to maybe go Oh, Fabi. This. this could be big. I mean, they, they have to make something happen on the right side here. This is very big. Assassinate was used. Vulture just oh, trying to escape here. I don't know if he has enough damage. He will go down, so that's another kill right there. But, I mean, at the same time, Me Club and Fabi both fell.
Yeah, they both fell over there. We saw Fabian mid lane belly flop in and get caught out of position by Cumber Corner. Upper coin into Agni damage. And now a big ultimate in middle lane coming out from Sonic Boom for CV. Are they able to secure it? No, the turnaround for Fiddy is here. Age is going to buy some time for Defoe. But can he get away from this? Because Osmosis is coming around the backside on Loki in vanish form. Has he got the damage for it? A big bit of burst, but a good stun. Is the dot going to be enough? No, it's not. Apollo's in the sky. Is he going to be able to make someone pay with their lives? I doubt he's going to be there in time. I really don't want to see him waste all of his Mono looking for kill opportunities here. It's just not going to happen. In fact, he does go for the right side camp, but he actually still loses at least one. I'm not sure if he got either one of those looking at the scoreboard. I think he did manage to get one, but look at how much mana he used. It would have been so much better spent just going over towards the left side of the map and getting those creeps. The game is backwards and forwards right now, DM. If you notice, the golden experience is still even, but the re reason it's so backwards and forwards is it's down to the misplays that... Both teams are technically making, they're both making small misplays and the other team yeah. are capitalizing on them. And that's what's keeping it so even right now. If one of the teams can just cut back on the small mistakes they're making, they'd be really, really far ahead right now. Yeah, there, there's just not a lot of caution. I think both of them recognize the fact that they're not going to make it into the Smite Pro League and they're just looking to make plays here instead of just playing fundamental Smite. And you can see the weakness in almost every play that's happened. I mean, there, there have been botched kills, there have been botched escapes. And things that should have happened almost in a guaranteed way are happening happening in the opposite way, similarly to how CV should have died early on with that Sentinel usage, but somehow gets out of it anyway. So currently the map looks like a Christmas tree with the amount of ward coverage down from both teams. And the Gold Fury is the king of the Christmas tree right now as Mercury's going to find Loki in his own jungle, but immediately vanishes away. That's the power of Loki just escaping from a bad situation he found himself in. No Gold Fury contention yet at 12 minutes in. A little bit strange considering Oof. in the previous games we saw contention happening at three minutes. In. Yeah, big, big difference in that. And once again, both junglers hanging around middle lane now. It feels like this seems to be the focal point from both junglers right now is the middle lane. They're both trying to get dominance for their, for their mid laner, but overall it's still going even. Left side. No, I don't think they're going to go for it. At first, I thought that they might make a play, but no, I think they're just going to continue their normal farming game, which is definitely the correct call. My issue here is that Fabi level 9 is once again starting to fall behind. 5,100 gold. You look across the way at Polium, who's at four, almost 5,500 gold, on top of the fact that he does have that extra level. Look at level. the build. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Iron Mail's already out. I mean, that's Blink so as well. important. And Blink. I mean, having Blink online as well is a really big thing, but he's going to get caught out of position here. Oh, Fabi. Uppercut was good from Pulliam, but he used the ult from Fiddy coming out. Now, Pulliam's in trouble. Good throwback. Going to buy him some time. Could his team collapse and save himself? Not sure. Sonic uh -oh. Boom's going to come out. Fiddy's uh -oh. in trouble. Shield saves the day. Astro Barrage from the top side was wasted on Tacumba Corner, who you can't kill through that at the moment. I'm a monster at middle lane from CV. Going to connect some Defoe and it's late bloomers that are the ones making this one pay off for them as Fabi continues the aggression on headshot. Oh, Me Club's jumping in and a smart sentinel right over the wall to try to chase headshot and get immediately away. Uh -oh, You're going to see CV have a chance to escape. Uh -oh, King, yeah, King Taco has put himself in a, a rather precarious position. The last ghost will not be enough damage as Me Club is super Ooh, low live. and will go down. Looks like their sights are now turned to Bulcher, who is maybe not in the best spot considering most of his abilities are on cooldown. People are not sure where to go to next, and they're just going to back away. Gorfury was a possibility for both those teams in that engagement. But 73 now, late bloomers do take a small lead in terms of kills. The golden experience shot up after that engagement that was all about Pulliam getting caught out of position warding there. So now 7-3, to three, late bloomers have taken a, a rather drastic lead at 1,200 gold, 2,600 experience. Maybe not the biggest lead that we've seen today, but it's the first real lead of the game. And you can see that reflected now uh, in the levels where you see Osmos uh, level 14, everyone else 13 except for Fabi, who once again is a little bit behind, but not behind enough uh, to really shut him down. Though somehow, even though Polium died in that last engagement, gained a level and Fabi remains single digits. Does, but he's now managed to pick up some items. He's gone back to base, actually got tier two of his sovereignty online right now. On top of that, he's also gone for shell rank one. So we can see the sort of area that he's looking to do. Polyam now might find out Taco on this left hand side, but immediately thinks better of it. But he's beaten in because there's a sonic boom in his face, and now King Taco is in trouble. The bit might buy some time, but for how long is the question? Taco has just committed suicide. Yeah, he, he, didn't, he, he tried was not to get up out. there, but did not get up in time. And once again, they turned their sights to Fabi, who has spent the last three minutes not farming. 
Right now, middle lane, you're going to see agony pressure in. Once again, onto CV, he's in a bit of trouble. Fiddy going to rotate in here. Pop the Orman Defoe. Aegis burn. And a monster comes out, not going to connect, connect as the Path of Flames is used. And a good escape from oh, Agony, almost. but a, that's big. That's big. That last ghost actually did manage to chase and kill him. And that's, I mean, that's a kill on the, the most farm person on the team, 7 to 5. They're still, all, actually, they're only down about 600 gold at this point. And now, Jean Kue is getting free farm. Probably the yeah. character you really don't want to see get ahead. But when we say that's big, it's the fact that this should be a farm lane DM, right? Like right. They, These two should not die to each other overall. It's almost impossible for them to kill each other unless a misplay happens. And that must have been the only occasion there. Just Loki overstayed his welcome. Now he's going to lose his tower more than likely here before he can even get back and defend this. And if Scylla does come rotating over, then they could, she's going to lose some free tower pressure on mid as well. So looking over towards the Gold Fury, Fabi finally hits level 10. He's rotating in. Maybe looking for an opportunity on Me Club. They dive in. Cripple's going to miss. No actual arrow even used. Uh, nice. Mesmerize going to stop this. That was nice. And he is out of there. That was nice. Mez will get away. You knew he had time to do that and be able to survive. But he's got to get some free tower pressure on the left-hand side. Not many minions, so they can't tank it up for too long overall. If they try and backdoor it, they need to be very, very careful because Polyam will rotate in there and could cause a few issues. But that's how it gets chunked down. So one tower on either side for these two teams is on their last legs right now. So left lane, they have a chance to push this down, but you're going to see Mercury rotating in. Headshots trying to keep them honest here as Me Club finally gets back. Nice roll. roll. King Taco will dodge the Noxious Fume stun, but still takes some damage. Headshot turns himself and throws him right into the air, hot off the back of the epic oh, uppercut. They're all grouped. And he goes Monster down. connects from Me onto Me Club, but that's it. Astral Barrage, though, can he find the third snipe? He can't, you know. Meanwhile, Fiddy's trading with Headshot. Headshot's getting very low. Tried to use the Sonic Boom. Didn't find it. Now Me Club's the one being focused on. The Mez came out, but the sick was enough to allow him to kill up. Meanwhile, again, Sean Kui gets a solo kill on Loki as Pulliam's getting dropped into passive form one more time. Taco's going to pick this one up, and all I can do is run away because Taco will just continue putting the aggression on. Big, big plays right there for the guys on Bloom, uh, securing a little bit better of a lead as they started to fall back down. About a thousand gold separates the two teams now, as we're going to see a probably a, a switch back to farming. Though on the right side, the tower has been picked up. Bolcher has got himself a lot of experience. He killed him again. Himself as top farm. He killed Loki again in that engagement in the 1v1 trade and that this is the one thing that Torch needs to do like DM they're starting to slip slowly in terms of experience and gold and these team fights are not going in their favor but they need Zhong right now Zhong is absolutely massive and Defoe is going to get caught out in the jungle as well as he was trying to defend the gold fury that's going to be a free gold fury as well going over to late bloomers they need Zhong Kui to just get in this fight right now he's really big he's really strong and he's he's Zhong Kui I mean, that Warlock Sash at this point is providing a huge amount of sustainability. Looking at his overall damage, he's sitting at 229 total, which means that thing is very close to fully stacked. He has another Golden Sash activated here. This is likely going to be a Gem of Isolation. Well, right now he's rotating to middle lane overall. Going to apply the card to Fiddy. The shield was applied, but the Exorcism does decent damage back. But now Fabi's there as well, so Bolcher's got to be careful of how far he overextends. Loki's going to get some free farm right inside with this, though, allowing him to stack up that Heart Seeker again and get a little bit of tower pressure off here as Bolcher tries to wiggle his little ass backside there to try and defend it again. So I'm looking once again at John Quay. Has 100 health from Vamp Shroud, right? 300 health base on Warlock Sash on top of another 300 coming. Then you have the 200 coming out from Golden Sash, which can increase depending on what he built it into. After this, it seems to me that that's an ethereal staff. It could, I mean, it could well be. It makes sense to do so. Fiddy's going to rotate around the back, and this is the biggest issue for him. It's Nemesis. I don't think they can kill him. Well, Stun does land. There's the ghost coming out. Big assassinate coming out. He's getting very low. Sonic Boom going to buy him some time, though. And now Fiddy's the one that's cut out of position. The car connects into the special delivery. Fabi's rotating round, but Bolch is getting low. And he's going to trade one for one right now as Osmos might get away. Oh, huge shot from CV. He's going to find himself a kill. And now they're turning their sights to Osmos, who just might barely escape. Fiddy goes down. That two was a huge play. I mean, yeah, two for one again for the guys on Bloom. They spent so many resources trying to kill this Jean Quay. And really, all they did was just waste a ton of time. Because now even more farming potential belongs to the guys on Bloom. I mean, Bloom are in a really good position right now. Fiddy goes down in that engagement, but they do bring down the man mounted himself, Jean Cui. He's not got enough gold to finish that ethereal staff if he's going to be one overall, and Headshot Fabby, goes down as well on that. Fabi has 2,600 gold. What's he saving for? I, uh, I don't know. Maybe retirement? Does he not know about items? 
Oh, is it just come back? Fab, are you sure he's on 2600? I'm, I'm, oh, he is on 2600. Yeah, 27 right. now, yeah. Like, he's I mean, got sovereignty. He could have his full shell back up right by now. Right, and like, that is only 1700. He'd still have 1000. Wasted gold. Like, gold is great to have, but you've not, you've got to put it to use, you know? If you don't right. put it to use, it's just not, it's not, it's not really there until it's actually in an item. He's put himself ahead of gold, in gold of Pulliam. And he's not spending, he's still farming. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity for him to go back. And finally, he will go. Uh, King Taco sitting 2,500 as well. Uh, that's going to turn into, yes, Jinsai still has 600 left. Finish sprint. He will leave the base with a little under 30 and have a great amount of potential for boxing here. Uh, King Taco level 17 right now, whereas Meat Club 15. Meat Club, and sitting on the amount of gold that he does, doesn't have the same amount of damage, not even close. Looks like Bacchus is going for Voidstone here as well. Looking to reduce magical protections? I it think looks that's a that good way. play here. I mean, CV has a lot of damage. Well, Osmosis takes a lot of damage, and he gets caught in the special delivery through Vanish. That was nice from Headshot, predicting where that was going to go. Meanwhile, though, jean Kui gets caught out by Finny, and that is a match of the sugar in favor of Nemesis. But how big is Vulture? He's big enough. Exorcism secures the kill. And now Headshot's just going to zone with the Sonic Boom. In case that's anyone's gonna hurt me. Fiddy is level 18 right now and is the only person on that team who has any chance of killing that Zhang. That's got to be a big, big blow to just the overall mentality. I pick up a cut, gets used by Pulliam. On to Scylla there, but immediately she uses the Sentinel to get away. Nothing more comes of it. Headshot is channeling that Sonic Boom, looking for an opportunity. I guess he's looking for something through mid. When Fabi rotates back, is he going to go for it? That's the question. Well, no, he isn't. He's just going to wait and bide his time. Gold Fury's up in about a minute here, DM, as Defoe gets some nice poke off on Taco. Yeah, Taco got hit a little bit, and but he, you know he does have life steal. He can he can heal yeah. that up pretty quickly. Me Club continues to get some free farm over in the left lane. Still level 15, looking for a chance to catch up. He's 16 now, but King Taco has already procced into 18. And you know, I mean, that's a character that is constantly doing well as you level him up. I mean, you level up Apollo, and you're starting to get the moves. And Where's Combo going? They do some decent damage, but not nearly enough compared to... Combo just dived in. Guess a yawn off. CV's in trouble. Good use of the beads. Oh. The I'm a monster was going nowhere. And in the end, it looks like that might pay off for them, but Pulliam still tanking up the tower was really good for him. Headshot's tanking it now, though, and he needs to get out sooner rather than later. Fabi belly flops away. Taco's there to defend, but Exorcism from Bulcher secures another kill. The recall demon's actually going to proc the tower onto Bulger, who's not oh, in snacks. a great spot here. Miss. Really a lot of missed shots, but Nemesis will be too fast. He won't be able to escape this one. I right, should have those minions for as long Jeez. as he can. <laughs> he did a good job, Jigger. I think Vinny was just waiting for the opening from the auto more than anything else. Oh, but, diving like, the tower. Osmos ooh. finds the assassinate. Aim Gold strike Fury. combo and then immediately vanishes out. That's two people down on each side. Polium is available, whereas Fabi is not. They could go this is for dangerous. this. Oh, well, Poly Taco. Polium's no. got a ward. Polyam's got a ward here, and he knows this is going on. He's, he's got, Taco's in trouble. Oh, okay. But Fiddy's, Fiddy's, right, Fiddy's going to zone them out, and they're going to be like, oh, no, yeah, okay, we'll back off now because, you know, we're, we're scared. Oh, Taco's, Taco's actually realized he's really oh. smart not to. If he stayed, he was dead. But look at Osmos. He's going to get damage on Me Club. He's forced out the beads on him. He's going to duke away. But how much damage is he going to take? Too much damage is the question of his response. And now Fiddy's diving in for Defoe, who's really, really low on health. And Kumbakana... He, he hung around in the Gold Fury waiting for him to come back and do it. He's going to have to wait even longer now. He just spent two minutes waiting there and he's not paid off now. King it Taco looked like it would have. absolutely just went fishing there and baited Defoe like I've they know never, he's there. ever seen. Yeah, he really got baited. And now Pulliam's going to get caught in position because he was sat in a ward the whole time. Crush going to connect. Fiddy going to continue the chase. The slow is applied. Groggy strikes. going to buy him some time with a yawn. But Gold Fury goes to late bloomers. 17 to 11. And the gold lead is a stretch to 7,000, 9,000 experience. Late Bloomers are in command. Yeah, I mean, they're two level 20s right now, and it's on Nemesis and Loki. Like, that's something you want to see. CV not too far yeah. behind, and don't forget, uh, Scylla gets a certain amount of damage every time she maxes his skill. She has three of that online. I'm pretty sure it's 20 uh -oh. damage per, yes. Uh -oh. Has to use a Rhyme Monster defensively here. Special delivery used to chase up. Headshot doing some great damage on the backside. And the ghosts come out. And they could continue fighting this overall. But Finny's going to use the ultimate. Sonic Boom comes out from Headshot. Oh. But if I'm going to connect. Snipe two. Not the third. But if it connects, it was good. Apollo's in the sky. Can he come down well? Vulture 
not going to be able to stay alive there. Fiddy finally bringing Nemesis into this game properly as they find a pretty big kill there uh, onto Vulture. But CV was also taking out a one-for-one one trade. I'd still give that one to the guys on late bloomers. I mean, level 19 for level 19 is even, but they're taking John Quay out, who's the only real contention right now. That's right. Yeah, I mean, late bloomers have to... Sorry, late bloomers only really have to bring down John Quay and Vulture to really feel confident about how the games are going to play out overall. Fiddy's doing a good job right now of trying to get involved in the fights and survive surviving for the most part now, has died three times overall, but for, considering he's been on the forefront for the whole game, DM, he's currently 13, he's been involved in 13 of the 18 kills involved in this game. That's actually kind of incredible considering what has been going down so far, but I'm, I'm looking at Fiddy as a person who has not only been a part of those kills, but really has set them up almost every single time. Oh, I agree. I mean, he's the one that's done the initial engagements and the initial slows to force it. He had a bad 1v1 by with jean Cui, which is one of the deaths he's got on his list. But now Taco could get caught out. Special delivery going to miss. A good roll away. But he turns back into fight. I think the fight, again, was a bad call. Should have just carried on running there. And now Bacchus might pay with this one as well. I don't think they realize he had no backup. Yeah, Headshot kind of left that a, a little prematurely. He could have used his wards and team communication to figure out where people were on the map. I mean, Kumba Karna had to be yelling he was chased by two at that point, which means at very worst, it was a 3v2 in his head, and they could have won that pretty simply. Well, now we've got two mages stacking up in mid lane in Jonk and Agni defending against Scylla and Fiddy. Osmos ro rotating around the side. The tier two tower down. Sonic Boom from Headshot going in 3v1. Crazy man, the team's not even there yet. He's going to drop immediately. And now the rest of the team pile in. And it looks like Fiddy's going to try and make them pay even more. His bot just getting chunked down. And now Polyam can't really do much about this apart from watch Apollo's in the sky. Can he make something happen? Polyam taking some damage. Fiddy down to one hit. Does he have his shield? He's Two waiting boots. for retribution, oh. but he does not find it. Meat Club answers back. A one-for-one one trade once again as we see, uh, yeah, the boys go down. That's a big push right there. They need to be careful, though, at this point. They're, they're starting to put themselves in situations where they're gaining these small victories. Like right there, they killed Headshot, but they traded level 20 Fiddy for it. I don't think that's worth They've got to be careful with the engagement, like you say. I mean, the, the tier, two, tier one tower in middle does go down now in favor of Torch. But right now, they're going to get mid camps on the left-hand side for it, but nothing more than that for now. They've lost a tier two on the right-hand side because Loki, even though Loki fell behind and had a bad lane matchup in the end against jean Kui after the start he had, he's done well to take down that tier two tower. While realistically, since jean Kui has left the lane DM, he's not really got that involved in the game. He's not been able to be, you know, the driving force we would have expected. Well, I mean, he's level 20. He had a long respawn timer there, but he just got a chance to go back and spend gold. The Gem of Isolation is up. He has Armored Cloak now for some extra defenses, but he keeps building into these defenses and these large amounts of health. The issue here is that Nemesis is ulting him every time for percentages yep. of health and percentage of protections. He's not really utilizing it. I would have liked to see more damage, just base damage. Well, now that Nemesis is level 20 as well, Astro Barrage goes off. He's going to look for the snipes. Good ages coming out from Defoe there. But that was the first time I've seen Taco actually be patient with his ultimate, and that nearly paid off for him. Nearly secured himself the kill. He's getting surrounded by three members here, but the team flocking around are going to make them pay even worse than that. The ghosts are coming out, but can Bolger get enough kills to make it worthwhile? I don't think he can. Nemesis can dive this freely with the amount of protections and the amount of damage she's able to do. I mean, look at that. She's even taking this to get the passive off of, uh, uh, of Kumba Karna there. That wasn't even necessary. Doesn't need to do that. Mid tower goes down. They can look for a tier two if they want to, but it looks like the fire giant, the way they're rotating, is going to be next on the list. However, Defoe is still online as his headshot, and Defoe's got some nice damage on him. So if he can actually rotate in here, he could possibly poke them down. How many make it rains has he got available to himself? I think he's got all three here. They've got to be careful with this one. They've got to zone him well. He has all three indeed. He's going to use one there. Fiddy actually going to heal himself up, oh, making himself missed. TC immune. No problem. He might go down here, but he gives his team long enough to get that fire giant. I don't think he's going to go down. Headshot could get caught out of position there. Belly flop going to connect. He did a lot of damage to us most, but not enough to bring him down. And the fire giant goes to lay bloomers for pretty much free there. The team chemistry just wasn't there. Right there. I mean, uh, we, we saw Agni rotate out. We saw Mercury go back in. They're just not communicating at this point. Torch seems like they're on tilt. Late bloomers. So yeah, Torch. You said, you said Torch. Yeah, Sorry, my yeah, bad. Torch, I got confused. Torch, I was like, what? Yeah, Torch seems like they're on tilt. Extremely emotional, it seems. They're they're not making the right calls. They're they're not communicating with each other. They're not dedicating to the correct targets. And they're just... And when you have that kind of 
lack of communication going on versus a character like Nemesis who has 14,700 yeah. gold or against a Loki who can get in and get out for free on top of the fact that CV currently has access to level 5 I'm a monster it's trouble the scariest thing to note as well, dear, about how this game's gone is I said duo lane goes in favor of Torch, mid lane goes in favor of Agni, and yet late bloomers are the ones that are coming out on top overall in terms of how the game's played out. I even called Torch to win this game based off picks. I mean, they they had a really strong lineup. They really do. The, the Nemesis is just doing too much work. CV has done great, and despite the fact that Babby had an extremely weak early game, has paid dividends in this late game. I mean, he has been an incredible force for this team. Really brought himself back into it once that Sov got online. The Void Stone, yep. his damage is really starting to peer up as well. You can see, boy, looking at the player damage, he has actually put up at 8,400 compared to Polyam at 42. I mean, Polyam doesn't really do that much damage at Cumbercon unless you make your throw back, and it's kind of situational anyway. But, I mean, Torch did have a stronger composition on paper. That's how it felt anyway going into this one. But even Osmos, who did not have a great laning phase, has come out strong with his rotations and actually been able to pick up these kills, DM, as the game's gone on and actually get himself out again, which is one of the hardest things to do when you play Loki. Mid tower looks like it's going to go down for free. Kind of overcommitted here. Fabi's going to be able to run him. forward. Don't care. Now, oh, belly flop's going to miss. Belch probably not going to be too effective here. I'm a monster. Oh. Hits the foe for a very uncomfortable amount of damage. Uncomfortable amount of time. Snipes uh -oh. come out again. Uh -oh. Defoe. Oh. Okay, that he was not ever going to land that one because he was going to run out of time. But Defoe survives thanks to the ages. Ghost come out from Bolcha, but he gets chunks within an inch of his life. He's going to run away. Apollo's going to the sky. Going to look dunk down on the backside. Headshot takes out CV. Taco though does find Bolcha going in deep for that one, but now he's in enemy territory. And Headshot's trading with Fiddy, but he's in a full minion wave as well, DM. Agni still has a little bit of damage available to him. Here comes Osmos trying to cut off headshot. He will find it just as Fiddy close. barely stays alive. That was very, very close. But only Agni remains versus three as King Taco smartly uh, walks over towards the left camp to try to lifesteal some health back. Osmos using that decoy to try to clear some waves up. It looks like they're going to pressure the left side. You know, Loki was late to that fight because he took Phoenix at the same time. Yeah. And while the whole engagement happened in the middle lane, Loki got Phoenix, and then they pressured on middle lane, and they come out on top with two members still being, sorry, three members still being alive. And with that decoy and those minions in mid, King Taco should make short work of this. Osmos has got to be careful, though. He takes a lot of poke from making rains, but the Phoenix falls, and he lives to fight yet another day. That was a really important push for them. Phoenixes mean so much, because not only do you gain access to the fire minions, but it forces that babysitting. You can't let those things get into the base because the Titan just gets destroyed by it. So you have to always keep someone trying to push, which leads them away from the Fire Giant, which respawns in about two minutes or so. They're going to have an opportunity, a great opportunity, to continue pressure onto that. Now, even if they hold off long enough for this Phoenix to respawn, it's debuffed. It takes a massive amount more damage, or rather uh, percent damage, because it has a much smaller percent health than it does in its previous state. I think the biggest issue this game for Torch, Me Club has not got himself online, in all honesty. He's 1-6-6 six, and six right now. He's only just his second reached level 20 as I say that. Like, hitting level 20 at 32 minutes in, this is a Hunter. It delays you so much in terms of, you know, your ionization and how well, how much damage you're going to do. And he just doesn't seem to have been able to get in the fight and split push. You know, he's not even able to split push the whole game as well, DM. That and Defoe is still 700 gold off of finishing the rod. He went into an obsidian shard here, but looking across the way, Magi's Blessing doesn't really give them too much defense. Uh, CV hasn't built any defense at all. And then Fabi has Voidstone. I mean, this is, and I guess, the passive from Sav. I mean, I, I don't really like the obsidian shard grab here. I think he had enough penetration. Oh, Fiddy gets a 1v1 against Headshot. What? They, they don't have any threat. I mean, there's just not enough damage here. They immediately kill Headshot, and that was most of their damage right there. Well, now he's at 5v4 with two Phoenixes down. Minions pushing on the right-hand side. Minions pushing on the left-hand side. Fabi tanking it up on the front lines as the rain comes in. Pulliam trying to zone out, but this Phoenix is not going to last much longer. Assassinate used to buy some time from us most not to die to it. Groggy Strike comes out, and a monster doesn't really connect well. Apollo to the sky though but can he make anything of it well fire giants up if they can hold out long enough to try to find a chance to get to the fire giant but it looks like polyam is just fiddy's doing work here fiddy's doing work he's chasing down me club and now you're going to see on the back side that fabi takes that polyam as well in passive form all three phoenixes are down late bloomers they won the last time they faced off against torch but it was nothing like this dm 
Yeah, I mean, Don't this is like kind this. of a blowout. All three Phoenixes down, whereas we still have a Tier 1 available for the late bloomers, 18k ahead, as they're going to turn their sights here to the Fire Giant. Once this Fire Giant's active, they could actually just dive the Titan and, and just blow it up. Well, Taco's actually trying to end here, but he's not got the minions to do so. He needs to be careful about getting caught out. Headshot has got that element available. No. Sorry, boom, got to connect. Forces the beads immediately. The trade of no. crits between the two. Headshot survives the best amount of health. Bolter should have kept going. And that was really, off. really close. But now the issue is they don't have that ultimate available for when the Fire Giant starts. You look at the board here. Polium has one. He's not even respawned. Defoe has a few, but he, he's nowhere in position. But then again, left side, kind of out of position as well. Minion, sorry, Titan down to 75% health right now. Fire Minion spawn on the right hand side going in. Phoenix on that side going to spawn soon, so someone needs to defend that soon. Otherwise, the Phoenix is going to spawn at the same time. Fire Giant's been started, though, and it looks like that's what Torch have decided to prioritize. Is Apollo and Agni. Actually, no, they're not going to go for the Fire Giant. He's going to give up. Can Pullion make a play, DM? Oh, he blinks, and it resets. It's a shame. I mean, they, they have to Good be call careful. to reset it. Good yeah, call to I, reset it. They, I think that was the right play. Well, this nope. could be even even better play because if they catch Pulliam out here and pick him up down. Well, rather, Fiddy took a lot of damage overall from those from those attacks. Now, Osmos and Fiddy is going to rotate back down. Fabi's here as well, doing some damage. Decoy blows up. CV trying to keep out the entire team, and Headshot is on the wrong side of the map. They're trying to play this Space Invaders game, and it was just too little too late. All five members of the boys on the late bloomers are going to have the Fire Giant. Oh, Bolch is actually popping the ultimate, trying to pick up this Rom who goes into the sky with the Astral Barrage, but now he's going to allow the team to collapse as they're waiting for him to land. Another damage comes out, and King Taco takes out Bolcher and Pulliam one after the other. CV tries the Iron Monster, doesn't connect with anyone, but the rest of his team clean it up. Osmos with the cutest assassin, they finds himself a kill. Meek Club gets turned on. He's repeatedly going to get smacked around here. Only a little bit of health left, and that's going to be the Dia side. Those are going to be the Phoenixes, and that will be the game. Torch unable to find any footing in this series at all as a 35-19, to 36-minute game comes to its conclusion. Comes to an end with late bloomers coming out on top over Torch. That makes them go, I believe it's 2-4 in the group right now for late bloomers. Or sorry, 2-5 in the group, I think it is for late bloomers right now. Torch is 0 and 5 right now in the stages that we're at. But the one interesting thing to know about that, that is an example of what it's going to be like in the challenger scene. It's going to be pretty close early on, DM. And I think if the teams can actually work on their work on the small misplays they make, they could actually, you know, be quite a good good strong teams coming out from North America. Well, today Torch has lost to both Chunks and Late Bloomers, but they have one more game to play as next up they go up against Five Angry Men. Now, if Five Angry Men lose this, they will lose contention for first seed. They must win this game and then win their following and final game of the day against the Fat Chunks to be able to even go for the tie. We'll find out what happens in just a minute, guys. We'll be right back with 5AM and Torch.